There are almost 200 different types of gases contained in gas cylinders. Some examples include atmospheric gases, fuels, refrigerant gases, lab gases, flammable, and poison gases, to name a few. The size of the cylinder can range from a small tabletop cylinder of propane that you might use for camping to large industrial cylinders as large as one-ton cylinders to containers used to hold highly toxic gases such as chlorine. It's important for your organization to develop, implement, and communicate a compressed gas safety plan to employees. Your safety plan should be designed to create safety awareness of the hazards of working with compressed gas cylinders. Communicate standardized procedures for use and care of the cylinders and ancillary equipment. The plan should also clearly communicate the organization's desire to comply with all the pertinent safety standards and regulations. Take the time to conduct a special safety meeting and training to familiarize employees with the elements of the program. An important part of any safety program is to ensure compliance with the rules. During investigations or safety inspections, the inspector will want to review the disciplinary records as it relates to safety. An absence of these records will lead to the conclusion that safety is not really a priority for the company. Compressed gas cylinders are often delivered by a vendor, such as a medical or lab supply, welding supplier, or other vendor. One should never assume that the cylinder has been delivered in a safe manner. Always observe the delivery driver as they make the delivery. Has it been delivered in the proper cylinder? What is the condition of the cylinder? How was the cylinder handled? If the delivery person gives you any cause for concern, immediately reject the delivery to ensure that you receive a safe cylinder. The first rule to remember with working with any gas cylinder is, all compressed gases are potentially hazardous due to the stored high pressures. So, secure the cylinder. A sudden release of pressure can cause serious injuries by propelling a cylinder or releasing a whipping regulator hose. In order to prevent the accidental release of compressed gases, all precautions must be taken to avoid dropping, knocking over, rolling, or dragging cylinders, as well as striking cylinders against each other. This means that it's imperative that all cylinders be stabilized in storage, transportation, and of course while in use. The proper securing of compressed gas cylinders is just plain critical and common sense. Gas cylinders must be secured with either chains or clamping devices properly secured to a sturdy structure. In addition to the obvious hazard of a flying gas cylinder, there are other important hazards to consider, such as asphyxiation. Simple asphyxiation is the primary hazard associated with inert gases. Because inert gases are colorless and odorless, they can escape undetected and quickly reduce the concentration of oxygen below the level necessary to support life. If this occurs in a confined space or tightly closed room, there is a real risk of death from asphyxiation. Fire and Explosion Fire and explosions are the primary hazards associated with flammable gases, oxygen, and other oxidizing gases. Flammable gases can be ignited by static electricity or a heat source, such as a spark, flame, or other hot object. Corrosive gases. Some gases are not corrosive in their pure form, but can become extremely destructive even if a small amount of moisture is present. Corrosive gases can cause rapid destruction of skin and eye tissue. Thermal burns can also occur from exposure to extremely cold cryogenic gases. Chemical poisoning. Chemical poisoning is the primary hazard of toxic gases. Even in very small concentrations, brief exposure to these gases can result in serious poisoning injuries or even death. Symptoms of exposure may be delayed and manifest themselves later, such as chemical pneumonia or pulmonary edema. A filling of the lungs with fluids, making death a very real possibility. A full-size H or K cylinder may weigh more than 200 pounds. In contrast, chlorine containers weigh more than a ton. Moving a cylinder manually may lead to foot, back, or muscle injury. The only safe way is by securing to a dolly or hoist designed for that purpose.
Anyone who handles and uses compressed gases must identify and confirm the contents and its potential dangers prior to being used. Check for safety and other information that are found on the labels, MSDSs, and cylinder markings. Never use a cylinder whose contents are not known. Most gas cylinders are color-coded to denote the material contained inside. However, this may not always be accurate, so it's very important to be certain that the contents are what you anticipated. Make sure labels are legible before using containers. Be sure to examine cylinders as soon as they're received for signs of damage or leakage. If a leak is detected, call your supervisor immediately, and if safe to do so with the supervisor's approval, move the cylinder to a safe, isolated, well-ventilated area and tag it unserviceable immediately have it returned to the supplier as soon as possible. In certain circumstances, the local hazardous waste regulatory agency may need to be contacted to assist in removal or control of the leak. Regulators are the most frequent weak link associated with gas cylinders. Use only regulators, pressure relief devices, valves, hoses, and other equipment specifically designed for the gas to be used and use the proper personal protective equipment when making or breaking any connection to a cylinder. Regulators are gas specific and not necessarily interchangeable. Always make sure that the regulator and valve fittings are compatible for the gas. Never interchange equipment between different types of gases. Under no circumstances should any attempt be made to repair a cylinder, valve, or regulator. Pressure relief and safety devices are used to help maintain cylinder or system pressure at the desired levels. Exceeding the desired pressure could damage the cylinder, or system, or create a leak. Always maintain valve pressures as required. Always keep removable caps and valve outlet caps and plugs on containers except when connecting to dispensing equipment. Never use oxygen and compressed air interchangeably. They are not the same. In fact, pure oxygen can be flammable and also toxic if inhaled. Never open valves until regulators are completely drained of gas and pressure adjusting devices are released. When opening cylinders, always point openings away from people and away from sources of ignition. Here's an important tip. Never secure cylinders to conduit carrying electrical wiring. The result could be shocking. Open valves slowly using only supplier recommended wrenches on valves without hand wheels. Never use wrenches on hand wheels. Using the improper tool can lead to damage and possible fire or explosion. Avoid working with highly toxic compressed gas such as hydrogen cyanide without special training and equipment. Employees should not use this equipment unless specifically trained in SCBA or other respiratory protection. Never tamper with connections, tap closed or force connections together. The contents of any compressed gas cylinder must be clearly identified. Such identification should be stenciled or stamped on the cylinder or a label. Commercially available three-part tag systems may also be used for identification and inventory. These three-part tags usually state full, in use or empty. No compressed gas cylinder should be used that does not clearly identify its contents by name. If the labeling on a cylinder is unclear or defaced, the cylinder should be marked contents unknown. Again, never rely on the color of a cylinder for identification. Color coding is not always reliable. All gas lines and manifolds leading from a compressed gas supply must be clearly labeled to identify the gas and area served. Labels should be color-coded to distinguish hazardous gases such as flammable, toxic, or corrosive substances. A yellow background and black letters work well. Signs should be conspicuously posted in areas where flammable compressed gases are stored. Identifying the substances and appropriate precautions, some examples might be Hydrogen, flammable gas, no smoking, no open flames. It's important to first assess the hazards associated with compressed gases and its equipment. 
From that assessment, measures must be taken to eliminate or reduce the risk with sound engineering and administrative controls. If these controls are not sufficient to provide a high degree of employee protection, then the proper personal protective equipment must be determined and provided to protect against any hazards. Examples of personal protective equipment, PPE, include eye protection, sufficient to completely protect the eyes whenever a gas cylinder connection is made or broken. This could include, but not limited to, chemical goggles or tight-fitting safety glasses with side shields as well as a full face shield in all cases. Fabric or leather work gloves and sleeves might be required whenever a compressed gas cylinder is moved or transported, or to protect from the hazard of cryogenic, cold gas, from coming into contact with exposed skin. The proper storage of gas cylinders is a critical component of gas cylinder safety. Let's take a minute to discuss some good practical suggestions for proper storage of gas cylinders. Compressed gas containers should be stored in labeled, well-ventilated areas well away from exits and stairways. If stored outdoors, cylinders should be off the ground, shaded, and protected from extremely hot or cold environments. Unless specifically mandated by the manufacturer, store cylinders in an upright position. Always keep the steel protective caps on when in storage. Group cylinders by type of gas and hazard category. It's required to separate flammables and oxidizers by the amount of space dictated by your fire department and separated by a proper fire rated barrier. Generally, oxygen cylinders must be stored at least 20 feet from flammables or combustibles and or separated by a 5-foot fire-resistant half-hour fire rating. Grease and oily materials must never be stored around oxygen, nor should oil or grease be applied to fittings. Cylinders containing flammable gases, such as hydrogen or acetylene, must not be stored in close proximity to open flames, areas where electrical sparks are generated, or where other sources of ignition may be present. Cylinders containing acetylene must never be stored on their side, as the contents may leak. When the cylinder needs to be removed or is empty, all valves must be closed, the system bled, and the regulator removed. Be sure to replace the cap and clearly mark as empty. Segregate full and empty cylinders by storing them apart. In addition to a special tag denoting a cylinder is empty, the letters MT may also be written in chalk or oilless crayon to indicate the status. Don't forget all cylinders must be secured to prevent cylinders from falling. Make sure fire extinguishers are located near the storage area appropriate for the fire hazard. Of course, be sure to post signage stating the name or names of gas present and no smoking signs where gases are stored. Never store compressed gas containers in high pedestrian and vehicle traffic areas. You sometimes see this hazard in hospital settings. Your organization should assign someone who's qualified to visually determine that compressed gas cylinders are in a safe condition. Inspection of cylinders should be conducted at least quarterly. If a cylinder is found to be of concern, arrangements should be made whether it can be repaired or must be replaced or returned to the vendor. Compressed gas cylinders should only be moved by individuals who've been properly trained. If the organization is an educational body, it may not be advisable to allow students to transport compressed gas cylinders. Remember, only use a hand truck of the proper size specifically made for transporting gas cylinders. Never try to transport by hand and never in the trunk of a vehicle. When transporting compressed gas cylinders by a vehicle, be sure it is adequately equipped to haul compressed gases safely. Stop the engine while loading or unloading flammable compressed gases. If compressed gas cylinders, whether full or empty, are moved by elevator, a safety watch should be assigned to control access to the elevator. As soon as a cylinder is delivered or moved, immediately secure the cylinder to prevent it from falling. Cylinders are generally equipped with either a hand wheel or stem valve. For cylinders equipped with a stem valve, 
The key should remain on the stem while handling and use. This way the regulator can quickly be shut off in an emergency. Standard cylinder valve connection criteria has been developed by the Compressed Gas Association to prevent mixing of incompatible gases. Outlet threads vary in diameter. Some are internal, some are external, some are right-handed, some are left-handed. In general, right-handed threads are used for non-fuel and water pumped gases, while left-handed threads are used for fuel and oil pump gases. The main cylinder valve should be closed as soon as it is no longer necessary to use the gas. Simply put, never leave a valve open when the equipment is unattended or not in use. Use only wrenches or tools provided by the cylinder supplier to open or close a valve. At no time should pliers, wrenches, or other tools be used to open a cylinder valve. Cylinder valves should be opened slowly and always be sure that cylinder valves are opened all the way. Open the oxygen cylinder valve stem just a crack. Once the needle on the high pressure gauge has stopped, open up the valve all the way. This prevents the high pressure gas from leaking out through the stem. When opening the valve on a cylinder containing an irritating or toxic gas, the user should position the cylinder with the valve pointing away and warn those working nearby. Be sure there's adequate ventilation in the area. Of course, no open flame or sparks should be permitted in the area. Once you've installed and secured your gas cylinder, there are other safety considerations relating to the piping systems carrying the gas from the cylinders. Distribution lines and their outlets must be clearly labeled as to the type of gas contained. Piping systems must be inspected for leaks on a regular basis. Special attention should be given to fittings as well as possible cracks that may have developed. Never install distribution lines where a high concentration of a leaking hazardous gas can build up and cause a fire or explosion, such as behind a wall. Due to incompatibilities, copper piping must never be used for acetylene products. Plastic pipe does not have sufficient strength and must not ever be used for any portion of a gas system. Doing so could lead to a fracture of the line and lead to all sorts of hazards including flying plastic shrapnel. Chlorine reacts with iron. Therefore, cast iron pipe must never be used for chlorine gas. Where the possibility of flow reversal exists, the cylinder discharge line should be equipped with approved check valves to prevent inadvertent contamination of cylinders connected to a closed system. A cylinder should never be emptied to a pressure below 25 psi inches squared as the residual contents may become contaminated if the valve is left open. Remember, when work involving a compressed gas is completed, the cylinder must be turned off and, if possible, the lines bled. Liquid bulk cylinders may be used in laboratories where a high volume of gas is required. These cylinders usually have a number of valves on the top of the cylinder. All valves should be clearly marked as to their function. These cylinders will also vent their contents when a preset internal pressure is reached. Therefore, they should be stored or placed in service where there is adequate ventilation. In the event of an emergency, each organization must develop its own written hazardous substance release emergency response plan. Practice escape routes, muster locations, and assignments that might be important during a compressed gas emergency. No safety program is complete without training. Under no circumstances should anyone handle, store, or use a compressed gas until he or she has successfully completed a compressed gas training program. This includes all new people who will handle, store, and use compressed gases regardless of claimed previous experience. Elements of a training program could include, but not be limited to, the location of compressed gases and equipment, hazards of compressed gases and equipment, personal protective equipment, inspection procedures, handling procedures, storage procedures, usage procedures, gas specific safety procedures, compressed gas emergency procedures. In addition to this program, a wealth of information on the safe handling of compressed gases can be found on the Compressed Gas Association website, 
www.cganet.com. The Compressed Gas Association has an excellent pamphlet series, including pamphlet P-1-1991, dedicated to proper storage.